Let's see here. What is happening, y'all? This is another episode of the Cogcast Podcast coming at y'all live here from the beautiful Cog Hill 40. We are waiting for everybody to show up here on our live streams. And let's see what's happening. Going to take just a second, and then all of a sudden, it's going to be like, boom. Hmm. Be a bunch of folks there. Here we Hi. go. Oh, there they go. There we go. I told you. <laughs> it won't take what <laughs> Why a does it second. do that? Why does it? It's just delayed. It's like nothing, and then it's, boom. Yeah, it's really, really delayed. Just like you said. Yep. Nothing, boom. <laughs> nothing, then boom. How are you? How is everybody doing? I'm assuming everybody can hear us okay. We got some new equipment, so I hope our sound's a little bit better today. It sure is a lot better without all the... Yeah, it is a lot better. Unneeded equipment up here. It is a lot better. I didn't know it was unneeded, but I just, obviously... I got, I got a new mixer. It's just a lot smaller. It's about the size of my hand, so... <laughs> the other one was about good. the size of that snake around. It was around. huge. <laughs> it was huge. Yeah, it was really, really big, so this one's a lot better here. So I think we're good. Everybody says sounds good. Sounds good. Yep. Sounds good. I got an okay from Wes and Zach. Uh, I got Wes from Big Family Small Farm moderating. And I have Zach from Head Family Farm moderating. So if you guys have not checked those guys out, be sure to go over to their YouTube channel and Facebook pages and check out Big Family, Big Family Small Farm and Head Family Farm because they help us out tremendously. And they're over there moderating all the comments to make sure everything is okay. And we're in here trying to stay dry. We are trying to stay dry. A uh, little stormy on the radar. It is, but you know what? This missed us so far, pretty much. I just this week. looked at the radar when I sat down. Yeah. And if if it doesn't start pouring during we're, this, we're lucky. Episode, uh -huh. we will be lucky. Well, I don't know if we'll be lucky. We really want a little rain, right? But it's so loud in here when it does rain till it I don't know if we loud. want it right now. That's right. It is loud. Pretty darn loud. What's that mean? Oh, I'm recording. This is going to be the audio version. So I got it all going. Okay. So we're good. Hope How everybody, is everybody? Hope everybody's having an awesome, awesome day. This is another episode of the Carcast Podcast coming at y'all live from the beautiful, beautiful Cockhill 40 and soon to be stormy Cockhill 40. According to the radar, <laughs> uh, I wish we'd get some rain. Uh, it's <laughs> haven't had much rain. Um, just been kind of slacking on the rain side here. Uh, we need it though. We absolutely need it. Well, we got kind of a a shocking forecast earlier in the week. It was talking about like six inches of rain for us. Yeah, for us over a period of days, yes. not all at one time. Right, but right. It was it was coming from the Gulf and around the coast was supposed to be almost a foot of rain on and off, you know, throughout the days. And we hadn't seen what they were talking about yet. Yeah. I hadn't seen that yet. Uh, they were actually talking somewhere around upwards of 15 inches of rain in some places down South. So have, um, have they seen yeah. it or do you know? Who's that? South. I don't think they've seen it. I really don't. So you think they just missed that one altogether? I think so. And it goes all the way to Louisiana and West from Big Family Small Farm. They're kind of on the on that side and they haven't seen a ton of rain either. So I don't know. Maybe it's still coming. Well, I tell you, every time I look at the radar, it seems like it's either further north than us or south of us. It's, and it's yeah. like the you know, right, right here where we are. It's, it's staying dry. Everywhere but here, uh, we definitely need it. I'm going to tell you, though. I'm going to tell you. And I was talking to Tanya from Hidden Valley Farm, who does our bees, who has puts the bees hive, bees hive, <laughs> beehives here on our farm. Um, I was talking to her. And I'm going to tell you, Bahia grass is, like, magical. I mean, we've had hardly any rain. Uh -huh. But it is as green as it can be. It grows like crazy. We have to cut it about every five to six days, and I just can't imagine having a a semi wet summer and having bahia grass in it because it'd be taller than we are. We'd have to cut it about every three days. 
we would have 20 foot rattlesnakes. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I'm fixing to, I got to figure it out. Um, I'll, Moody and the boys original pasture is ready for them to is go back ready in. for them to go back in it. But I don't want to take Moody away from his shelter. I think we could hook it up to the tractor and pull it over. You think so? I think so. Because I was thinking about just dropping the electric fence down think, on the ground and just let them go back and forth if they wanted to. I don't think they're going to cross the fence. I think we need to try it anyway because... Try moving it with the tractor? Yeah, just try it and okay. see what happens. You know, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Right. But um, I think if I get on the tractor with one side with yeah. like a chain or a yeah. rope and you get on the side-by-side -side with another one and yeah. we do it in unison... Like the guys that loaded our our pallet of wood yeah when we got our ship lap um for the inside the house it was like how long was it it was 16, 16 foot, foot six inches they picked it up it Four was inches, sorry. two forklift drivers yeah they simultaneously picked that thing up went across the yard with it and set it on our trailer and i was absolutely amazed well, that they did that i mean i can they, tell <laughs> you something <laughs> And that is that that wasn't their first rodeo. That was not their first rodeo at all because those guys just absolutely killed it. I was like, what? This is, this is crazy. Well, if they can do that with forklifts, then certainly we can do that with a side-by-side -side and a tractor. That's what I'm thinking. And, and I don't think that we could do it as a V because I'm thinking that it would pull it together. Yeah, I think you're right. So I think, you know, two separate chains of ropes. Yeah. Going at the same time may be the answer. It may not work, but... We'll figure it out. We don't know until we try. That's something that we're going to have to test this upcoming week. Let's get them in their... <laughs> let's get them in their area <laughs> before First? we test it. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to we figure We might out. have Moody in the driver's seat, if not. <laughs> how... how That's going to be the other issue is, is how we're going to get it over there without them following us. Yeah. I kind of worry about that, too, but... I don't know. If we'll it doesn't it work, then I would just lay the electric fence on the ground and just keep it off. And let them cross. And back let them and cross forth. back and forth. I just I don't, don't think they're going to go over the electric fence. I really don't. Cause if they do, they're not going far. Well, plus I, I haven't had it on. Um, You're notorious 50 for that. 50% of the time. Y'all, I, I, I forget to cut it on most he of the time. He does forget. Yeah. And like when we were sick with that C virus. Yeah. Um. I would go out and do some feeding when I felt like it and Jason could rest or whatever. And 90% of the time, if he had previously fed before me, the fence was off. Yeah. And I went inside one day and I said, look, I said, you're going to have to remember to cut that fence on because <laughs> none of us are in any shape to chase yeah. down a 2000 pound cow or two stinky boys, two stinky boys. Neither uh, one, none of, not, not any of us were in any shape. Well, I can pretty much tell you because, well, I'm sure it's say? off now, but oh, yeah. um, if you touch it, <laughs> the chances of you touch it again is slim to none. I'm because, not going in there without unless looking Unless you first. do a, a accident because you're going to go to rock down to Electric Avenue when you do touch that fence because you heard me touch it about a month ago and I made a noise that sounded like five demons being... Um, exercise from my body all at one time it's a noise i've never made before in my life i didn't even it know it was you i thought it was <laughs> one of the animals <laughs> making a, oh, a foreign sound but yeah it wasn't and i'm gonna tell y'all i'm not gonna touch that fence i'm <laughs> going to check it first and then ask questions later because yeah. i don't want to touch it well in the what was what was bad for me was is that i reached over and put uh, a feed bucket in there or something and i touched it under under my arm there where that nice soft tenderness <sighs> is and woo, woo, man it was rough it um it was rough now we we had to put it up there because moody had figured out that he could take his chin push the fence down and basically step over it with his kareem adu jabbar legs he's got or Shaquille O'Neal and, <laughs> and step over the fence with one. I mean, really, literally, literally, he could just like step. He could, he could push it down about a foot, and that's what I don't know what's what that a four and a half foot fence? I don't know what tall it is, five foot. Anyways, he could push it down with his face and just step clearly over it like it wasn't nothing. As a matter of fact, and I know I probably told this story, 
I hardly ever leave the farm unless it's something just I have to go. I'm usually here all the time. That particular day, we left because we had to go out of town for something. I can't remember what it was. Oh, I know what it was. The safe, the shelter, the safe that room. That was it, our safe room. We went and toured our, the, tour the, uh, the facility that built our safe room, our storm shelter, tornado shelter. And we got a phone call. And this was up North Alabama. We were, what, two and a half hours away from home? Mm -hmm. Got a call from Brent, the builder. He said, Moody's out. And I was <laughs> like, how in the world did Moody get out? And he said, we got him up. The dude, that was his help, the dude. The <laughs> dude got him up for us. And he said, we got him up. He said, but he got back out again and he's out again. And um, I was like, how is he getting out? He said, he's jumping the fence. And I thought, Moody can't jump. There's no way that big old 1,600-pound <laughs> cow can jump. There's no way he can do it. So he told me what he was doing. He was pushing it down. He was actually just kind of stepping. He, he may have been bunny hopping over it. He got I out three it. times that day on them. And I eventually told him just to put him. We didn't have flowers planted at the time. But right. we had that uh, winter cover crop. I said, put him out there. Hopefully, the cover crop would keep him occupied. And he'd stay out there until we came home. And it did. Yeah, because it was, yeah. it was winter. He had hay, but there wasn't yeah. any you know, grass. Right. And so on the other side of the fence where they had not eaten it, it was a little bit more grass and, and you know, more more of a palate for him yes. to consume than it was on the inside of the fence. And so that's why he wanted out. He saw the grass was greener on the other side. He sure got out <laughs> three times that day. <laughs> well, once Brant told us that, we hightailed it back home. Yes. But even then, it was almost dark because it was during the cooler months when the sun sets early. That's remember? right. Yeah, because it was. Yeah, it was. It was it dark was, when we got home. Yeah, and it was yeah. cold outside. Yes, remember? That's right. Um, it was cold, cold that day. It was cold, cold that day. I remember standing outside talking to the owner of the the safety shelter. That's right. And oh yeah. That's thinking right. it was to cold. myself, yep. Mick was, was really sitting in the cold. car going, "Yeah, no, hurry up." <laughs> <laughs> so we hightailed it back home, yeah. and and he was in that flower garden, and we decided. To go ahead and get the electric fence going that night. Started on it that night. I finished it that next day. Moved him over. And that's worked perfectly. So We sure yes. thought that um, if we didn't go ahead and get something done in 24 hours, then if he consumed that cover crop, right. we were in big trouble because the next step was out into the road, which we didn't want. We didn't want that to happen. No. 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 So, so we got that taken care of. And he realized real quick that it didn't hurt him of course i mean it it stung him but it didn't hurt him it kind of scares you more than anything it's it made like him not want to cross does. it yeah and it you I mean that's what we wanted to happen that's what we want to happen it's for his safety we just couldn't and the, take the risk of no if he got out on the road can y'all imagine oh my gosh mm. um it would it would be a mess, mm, but be it mess. didn't happen, and it's not going to happen. No, <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to happen. So our next step is getting them moved where the grass is greener. Yes. Well, it's not greener. It's taller. It's taller. The other grass is still pretty good. I mean, it's still at least three inches high, which is supposedly the rule of thumb. Uh, the height that you want your grass is around three inches. So, um, And actually, the other one is... It's like the seed part, you know, the, that bahia has that V shape. That's what's so tall. The rest of the grass isn't bad. It's just that that seed head that shoots up so and fast. And I wonder if it if it is so lush and thick because it basically reseeds itself. It must do. It must do. And and I said we haven't had any rain. We've had had a little bit of rain. We've had enough to like you've had a sprinkler on. Yeah. For a short period of time. And I'm sure that Bahia has just been loving it. I tell you what's been loving it. Um, what little bit of rain we have is the fruit orchard. Yes. It is absolutely beautiful. I was looking at it today and I was like, good gracious. I can't believe how beautiful the fruit orchard it is. Beautiful. Mary Carl told me the other day, she said, Mama, have you paid any attention to the big trees lately? Because the fruit orchard is off the side of our house. So it's really not somewhere that we frequent daily right unless you actually go over there and physically look at it it's it's not visible from the camper right but once we get moved into oh, the house we, yeah, and we'll that's the it. whole yeah. point yep. is yep. you know it'll be a step out our right. side door but she said mama have you seen the fig trees and i said yes i mean y'all it is unreal if there is a tip that i can give you guys to save you some money 
if you're in, if you're shopping for fig trees, don't be shopping now because it's too high. Wait till it cools off. But if you're shopping for fig trees, buy the one gallon fig tree don't or even buy smaller i mean if you can find them smaller than that then that's fine don't buy the three gallon don't buy the five don't buy the big don't because that fig tree is going to take off no matter what it's yeah. gonna well if you water it it's gonna grow it's gonna take <laughs> off. i'm telling you fig trees grow so fast so to save you a lot of money buy the one gallon fig tree versus the bigger fig tree because in a matter of a month that one gallon fig tree is going to be as big if not bigger than the three gallon they, they, they just grow so so fast now um we're in zone 8a uh figs seven ish is probably about as far north they'll go um unless some you got there's one called um it's the uh, the chicago fig or, or coach there's one that's got chicago in the name of it and i can't remember the exact name of it now allegedly it can grow in cooler climates but we don't know because we're in 8a and we can grow figs like crazy here well, but we they the, but they're from the mediterranean so they like the warm climates and another thing is when tracy from just dig it farms and her husband came over last time yes we walked down and we looked at the the fruit orchard just to get her to tell us some some tips on how to train the blackberries right, and which right. canes to cut and such. And Tracy told me that day, I think you were talking to Jean. She said, Brooke, she said, y'all's blackberries have tripled the size yeah, of mine. The blackberries are and huge. And she said, I just can't believe it. Yeah. And then she said, but I don't have irrigation on them. Don't have irrigation on them. And the ones that we planted last we haven't had time to get ir irrigation on yeah, those last. I, that's right. I stopped it because our, our, our initial plan was to grow nine bushes mm -hmm. and then we added nine more. And now we're fixing to add a lot more, probably 18 more uh, in the fall, 18 more blackberry bushes. Well, she, she yeah. said that she thought it was from the irrigation being on those blackberries yeah. that was making them flourish so much more than hers because she didn't have irrigation set up yet. And, I, and we put a drip irrigation on those, and it's uh, just a slow drip. Actually, I put two gallons per minute emitters on ours, so not minute, per hour. You would not believe the <laughs> amount of berries that are on those bushes. Yes. And they were planted this year. And they're, yeah, those, we planted those to get berries for next year, not for this year. Yeah. So, yeah. We're going to have our freeze dryer plugged in and ramped up and and going by next year and we'll hopefully have enough for cobblers and eating and freeze drying oh, yeah. and everything. Yeah. Uh, let's see nine bushes. I think that's right. Nine bushes. There may be three bushes, maybe three bushes, three bushes that bring you 45 pounds of blackberries. I want to say that right. you told me it was 200 pounds for what we had planned. I think that's right. I think that's right. I think, that's I think right. you said 200 pounds. Mm -hmm. So, oh, well, I'm not going to do that right now. Oh, work my brain. You're not going to do the math? No. I'm going to work my brain, and I don't need to work my brain. I need to save all that for another day. Mm. Um, what were you going to say? Nothing. Go ahead. Uh, we have been working on the aviary, and the grass has gotten kind of tall in there because you can't ride the tractor in there, and you can't ride the, the riding lawnmower. So then we had the sickness, and our weed eater has had some problems. So the grass has gotten kind of tall in there. How old is our weed eater? I told you the other day. I remember we were living with Mama on Dixie Drive when mm -hmm. I bought that weed eater. That's right. And it's a Shindawa brand. And uh -huh. I bought it at a, a small engine place that it, mm, it's been gone a long been time. Been gone a long time. So I would say 17 years. That it weed eater is 17 years old. And cranks up on the first pull. It cranks, but it's got a little hole in the gas tank. It's starting to leak gas. And then the head needs some work on it. And then I noticed the guard parts messed up pretty yeah. good. And so it's now, got a lot of problems. Well, what's happening to me was <laughs> is that when I press the trigger to go, and normally your line's a little too long, it hits that little blade and cuts it. Oh, it doing won't that. Do that anymore. It just wraps around it all over the top. It, and you it have won't. to stop, cut it off, trim it. Good. So. It Anyways, won't. I didn't mean to interrupt you about your weed eaters. No, that's okay. Yeah. You just made me lose my whole train. You're of talking thoughts. about cutting the grass okay, in so, the aviary. So anyway, we've been working on it and, and we've been thinking this whole time mm -hmm. we're going to leave grass in that aviary part because we're 
we're going to put the Victorian crown pigeons in there for sure. Right. And we know that they're not going to eat any grass. Right. So that means that every time that grass gets tall, we're going to have to get those exotic birds who are not handled. Right. And put them in an enclosure that doesn't make them feel real comfortable. Doesn't make us feel real comfortable. And shoe them in there. And they're the size of a turkey. These yeah. pigeons are the and size they're of strong. a turkey. They're really strong. Super strong. And I just don't want the stress of that. And so I approached me Carl today and I said, look, your daddy and I were talking about how much, how often the grass is going to have to be cut that bahia in there. grass. Because At least once a month in there. Well, yeah. And Every probably more frequent than that because probably we so. want it to look nice yeah. and and we had talked about it previously, and she wanted grass in there. But after our conversation today, she agreed that we probably need to plant plants in there that are, you know, bird, bird friendly, friendly versus having grass that needs cutting in there. Yes. And I told you we get some ornamental grasses, and it can so, be it can be very pretty. It can be so, very pretty with less maintenance. That's right. With less maintenance and better for them because it'll eliminate the stress of you know, them having to be moved quite frequently. Quite frequently. I just, I cannot, I, uh, when I was talking to you about it, I was like, I just can't think, I can't imagine us moving those two big birds yeah. every well, four weeks. I thought, at first I thought, no, they got to have grass. But where they are now, we yeah. have them in an enclosure that's outside yes. so they can get, you know, kind of acclimated to the heat. We did that at the beginning of the summer so they could, you know, slowly adapt themselves right. and not all of a sudden be in a hundred degree temperature, which they're hot weather loving birds. So. Right, right. But anyway, the grass in the area where they are now, it's just, it's tall and it's tall. it needs to be cut. And we cannot get in there with mm -hmm. them and weed eat and no we way. don't have anywhere to put them to, you know, we just, it, we're too close to being finished to lock them up and put them through that. What do we trip. like? The roof? No, we like, um, I ordered another roll of wire today. Oh, that's right. It'll be here next that's Wednesday. Right. Mm -hmm. And then we lack the, the metal part of the roof. And I told Mary Carl, I said, I bet you we'll be finished by next weekend. Yeah, I think so. Unless, Not this weekend, but next some weekend. crazy weather. I, I still, I mean, it doesn't take me 30 minutes to put the wire up. Right. If we had an hour of, of clear weather between now and, or next Wednesday and the weekend, then we can get it finished. Good. Good. So my point was that, we're wanting to add muscadines to the fruit orchard or scuppernons. Yep, muscadines. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. to the fruit orchard. And the weed mat that we used is 15 foot wide and we don't have any more of it. Oh, that's right. And yes. so I needed a weed mat to go down in the aviary first so we can plant the plants to prevent the weeds and grass from coming up. And so I went ahead and ordered the weed mat for the fruit orchard, mm -hmm. anticipation of building more beds and berms and right. whatever, and then um, putting it down for the aviary as well. Yeah, we were talking about the uh, fruit orchard and what we wanted to add, and that was muscadines. We want to do a muscadine row, and then we want to do a kiwi because we can grow kiwis here in Alabama and do a kiwi row. And, and then, I just learned that like two years ago, probably. Yeah, I had no idea we could grow kiwi here <laughs> until we went to Petals from the Past, and they got just ooh hoot was a kiwi. They do, and, everywhere. and it's, I mean, they were beautiful, beautiful. besides the fact that and huge. that we will consume them regularly. They get as big as round as that rattlesnake you saw. Oh, now, yeah. please. <laughs> this is an honest family channel, and we do not fib, <laughs> but they, <laughs> we do do well with them in, in our zone, and we I do. do think it's something that, that we will add, and hopefully we can add that this fall versus... Yeah, next year yeah, yeah yeah you don't want to plan anything right now guys no. at least us here in alabama or the southeast it's just hot as the dickens here y'all and so who don't we want to went, plan anything we right went now. to we went and stopped by pedals from the past yesterday and jimison i want to tell them why though okay but go ahead Mary carl had found a few plants that she liked and we literally had to pull her back and say look you know, we just, we got to wait. We got to wait on planting wait. because, I mean, when we get the aviary finished, we're going to plant that because it'll be in a confined area and we can keep it watered. As long as you can keep it watered. I can keep it yeah. watered. That's going to be my aviary. It's good guy to keep it watered. Did I say that? Your aviary. <laughs> <laughs> you better get started building Mary Carl's. 
Oh, we know what Mary Carl wants. I'm going to tell you. So, so yesterday we went to pedal from the past and, and we dropped off some bouquets. Well, that, that previous evening I had to edit I'm the video. I'm trying to remember what day it was. I had to edit the video. So it had come out on Wednesday because yesterday was Wednesday. Tuesday night. So Tuesday night and Tuesday evening, I started working on the video to get it ready for Wednesday. And so when I got through, it was late. I think it was, it was late. And so when I came inside, I saw a beautiful just bucket of flowers from the flower garden. And I was like, man, this is gorgeous. And I just thought Mary Carl had picked them for the, for the camper. That's what I was thinking. Well, the next morning, you told me Mary Carl picked them. She said that she wanted you to take her to pedal from the past, that she picked these for sale. And I was like, well, we got to take them. We absolutely got to take them from to pedal. Well, and it ended up being, do you remember how many? Was it 10 <laughs> bouquets or seven? No, it was more than that. I can't remember how many bouquets it was now. I think it was 10. I think so it was 10. I was helping my mom get some, some clothes from the tiny house mm -hmm. to the new house. And I come in the camper, and the first thing she said to me is, Mama, can we go to Petals tomorrow? Mm -hmm. And I looked at her, and I said, I don't know, baby. We'll see why. And she said, Cause I wanted to take the flowers. I didn't know she had picked all those flowers yeah. and arranged them. And she looked, and when I looked at them and I saw them, I said, sure, we can go to Petals sure, from the past. Sure, we can take them, yes. In the morning, because she was, she was so proud of herself and just... Did it all alone. Picked the flowers, made the bouquets, tied them up, filled the bucket up with water, put all of them in there. And had them ready and to go. And had them ready to go the next day. And they were beautiful. They, they really were. were. Beautiful. They were really, really beautiful. Uh, and so, yeah, we took them the next day. And yes. hopefully they sold. Hopefully they sold. I told her that night, I said, Mary Carl, I said, we need to put a tag on them that says Carl's Cuts. Yeah, Mary Carl's Cuts. <laughs> <laughs> Carl's Cuts. <laughs> oh, oh, goodness. But she did I, a good job. She did do a good job. And and for her to do it all by herself, I was like, man, that is unreal. I just, I was, I was pretty proud. I really yep. was. She, she did it and. And I'm glad she did because I got a lot planted out there and they need to be cut back. And I just haven't had time since well, we she got enjoys sick. It. And, 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 you know, she, so, just, yeah. she just was doing something that she mm -hmm. enjoys. Yep. It was uh, absolutely beautiful. And I'm so glad she did. In the meantime, we were over there looking at plants. And, yeah, you're right. They're just, just not a good time to be planting anything right now at all. <laughs> well, I saw some things that I didn't even realize they had. and. Yeah was beautiful and I wanted it, but I just had to pull myself away because I just know I can't keep it alive. Right I now. will say this though. <laughs> I will say this. I've been thoroughly impressed with the black oil sunflower seeds we got from Hoss about what, when we plant that field about a month Jason, ago. My mind, my time frame is just wiped out. We planted I mean, 10 pounds we of wildflowers. Three weeks. Yeah. So I know it's been longer than three weeks. Well, we planted a 10 pound, uh, 10 pounds of wildflowers and we planted 10 pounds of sunflowers. And then I planted some zinnias and some chocolate cherry sunflowers. 90, I would say 95% of the black oil sunflower seeds are up. Yes, they're and up. And are starting to bloom. Yeah. It's going to be a beautiful sight once thick. it gets all blooming and. No rain. No rain. Birds. Yeah. And the fact that they came up and are thriving is crazy. Now, the wildflowers, nothing. They didn't. They didn't. They did not like the lack of rain. And obviously, the chocolate cherry sunflowers did not like the lack of rain. But the black oil sunflower seeds did not did not phase them in the least. Nope. They, it didn't phase them. And, I mean, literally, it's like a set it and forget it kind of thing because... We're going to reap the benefits from doing nothing. Well, you see it over there, don't you? Another bag? I got 10 more pounds <laughs> of them. <laughs> so I got the bare spot. I got a bare spot on the left side where the wildflowers were. Got the sunflowers, the black hole sunflowers, and I got the other bare spot. So I'm going to plant the sunflowers. And, you know, we could have used the handheld spreader because they are thick. Yeah, we could have. They're super thick. We could have. And, you, you know, you just threw them out by I hand. I threw them out by hand. Are you going to use that on the next one? I'm going to try it on the next one. I really do. I really do. And and the thing that that uh, people really don't know about sunflowers, especially the black oil sunflowers, because they're so darn easy and hardy, they make one of the best 
summer cover crops that you can get. I mean, most people think of cover crops, they think of fall and winter cover crops. They don't usually don't think about summer cover crops, but sunflower seed or sunflowers make an awesome cover crop where that it breaks insect cycles. So if you got insects in your or pests in your garden, that'll break that cycle. It will drown out the weeds because you see how thick they are. Oh yeah. There's no weeds in There's there no whatsoever. Weeds. No now weeds. where the where we don't have anything planted where the wildflowers didn't come up, weeds are starting to come up everywhere. Well we talked about it when we planted it and you were wondering if we should row them. Yeah. And and I thought about it for a minute and I said, Jason, I said you do what you think's best, but I think we shouldn't row them. And the reason being is because I don't want to have to be out there trying to weed in between the rows right, and make right. them. Especially right now. We just got so much going on. Oh, I, yeah. Can you imagine? Yeah. Once we get settled in, it'd be different. But yeah, right now. But yeah, it's so thick, no weeds because it's draining out all the weeds. And once they do their thing, you can come in and chop them and let them drop. Do a little chop and drop with them and let them compost or till them back into the soil or tarp them. And they'll just be green manure and compost back into your soil. So sunflowers make an excellent, excellent summertime cover crop. Well, I'm glad you got them because I'm eager to plant a fall garden. Yeah, you've been telling me, Jason, I think we need to plant a fall garden. I think we plant a fall because we basically skipped uh, a spring summer garden. We um, couldn't help it. Though. We, just, we just didn't have time to do it. We really didn't have you time know, to I do saw, it. I, I saw a couple of messages that caught my eye and it was... Um, what do you guys homestead? You don't have a garden and you don't raise any animals for meat. So what do you guys homestead? Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, well, you know, it's just because of the situation. It's we're just in. timing. If they went back and looked at a lot yeah, of our sure. older videos. I mean, I'm sure there they were, were new followers. Yeah. But it's not that we've quit. Yep. It's not that we're not going to grow a garden for our own personal consumption mm -hmm. because I am just chomping at the bit i asked jason today i said when do we need to start the seed and that's something i never <laughs> ask and i let him know right you know right then that mm -hmm. i am willing to help in the garden any way i can so we're going to be prepared we're going to do a fall garden this year and here's the thing about us here in alabama which is kind of mind-boggling if you think about it because generally when you think about gardening you think about spring and summer mm-hmm we can actually grow more things and more varieties in the fall and winter here in Alabama than we can in the spring and summer, which sounds crazy, but we can. Well, the year before we moved, yeah, I don't even know what year that was, but <laughs> the year before we, <laughs> we moved, we had the most productive garden we've ever grown. That's right. And it was during the winter. It was in the fall winter. Yep. And then yep. that's crazy. We grow our garlic in the fall. And let it overwinter and harvest it first thing in the spring. Our onions are the same way. We can do herbs the same way. Um, parsley, thyme, um, oregano, all that we overwinter. Our carrots we overwinter. We plant them in the fall and harvest them in the spring. And then we have stuff that we can plant in the fall and harvest it throughout the whole growing season. Like collard greens, which is probably one of our favorite foods here. Uh, all your greens, collard greens, kale. Col Kohlrabi. Kohlrabi, <laughs> lettuces, spinach, well, cabbages, broccoli, cauliflower. You, I keep going. If y'all have been paying attention, we're building a house. That's right. And in our house, we're going to have a double oven and five burners. And I'm going to have <laughs> collards on one of those burners. There's no way around there it. There are collards in one on the burner and cornbread in one of the ovens. That's right. And they're coming <laughs> straight from this Cog Hill Farm garden. Ooh, that's right. And I'm going to help. I'm going to help. I'm help. eager to to get my my fingers dirty and grow us some some food on our new 40 acres. Yeah. Uh, and it just, I keep thinking of stuff we can grow, like rutabagas and Swiss chard. <laughs> just, we have room. Just we have just, room. Yeah. We have, I mean, and you asked me, you said, where where you want to plant the garden? I think you were thinking that I was hoping that the protege garden yes. would be ready by then. That's what I was I thinking. I know that's too far out. Yes. But in the future, you know, that, that, that will be what we do with some of our things, but I do think that we'll benefit from having oh, an acreage yeah. out front Absolutely. too to plant things directly in the ground. Absolutely. And, and a lot of it. And you know what else is awesome in the fall and winter? What? It's not 127 degrees with 112% humidity outside. Well, that's also what's awesome. 
I told y'all earlier that this was a family channel and that we don't tell lies on this channel. <laughs> but I have told a big lie. Oh, what's that? I don't like the heat anymore. <laughs> That's what you used to always tell me. I could not I wait till wait summertime. summertime. Y'all, I'm 40 something. I don't even know how old I am. <laughs> how old am I? 40. You're 46. 46. Okay, you're 47. Yes. I'm 46. And there, there is no time frame for when our body decides <laughs> we're hot when it's hot outside. Yes. But in 2022, at 46 years old, my body decided that it really probably doesn't like 100 degree temperatures anymore. It is warm. <laughs> it is hot. It is absolutely now, warm. Today, working outside, I mm -hmm. was fine. Yeah. It the was humidity a little bit cooler. wasn't what the it humidity. has been. You know, the hunt, the hunt, the, the temperature is not the way it gets us here. That's, it I, should, I should rephrase so... that. It was not, it's not the temperature. Yeah. Because I can handle it. That's right. Today, it was pretty, temperatures were pretty mm -hmm. high, but. Um, or the dew point. That, that's the thing. That's the dew is, point. Yeah. I'm not looking forward to winter either, but I will say that I'm not going to say I'm waiting for summer like I was. Our dew point has been around 78. So it has been pushing 80, which is, uh, you just have to experience it. You just, if you come to the Southeast, you just have to experience what, what, what our humidity is like. Um, well, literally, your, your, the, the sweat on your skin doesn't dry, it just stays there. Because the humidity level, the moisture in the air is so high that your skin doesn't dry off. So you feel just soaking wet and muggy and weighted down. <laughs> the good thing is, is that we have a uh, pretty skin because our skin doesn't dry out. Like in, I've been told like people that have dry weather, they have to put lotions and stuff on all the time. But here we really don't have to because it's humid all year long. Um. I was going to say that the 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 worst part for me when you're working outside yeah. and you get, I'm wearing these shirts because they dry out real fast. Mm -hmm. I hadn't told anybody that, but it's, it's just a quick dry shirt and it keeps me from being wet all day mm -hmm. when I'm working outside like I was today. Um, the camper air, it pretty much runs all the time trying the to keep time. up with the, with the temperature outside. All and so I'll periodically look at what the thermostat says. The temperature is on the inside. And usually it's around 78 during the day. It's yes. not that we have it set on that. It's just that's as cool as it'll get. Right. So we let it get that cool because at night it won't cool down if we don't let the air run on. Right. It. So like when you're outside working and you're hot and you're sweaty and you, you think you've had enough and you need to cool off and you go inside in that camper and it's 78 degrees, you get cold. Yeah, it does. It's, it's, <laughs> it's a terrible feeling. Too, because <laughs> yes. When you're outside working, you really don't notice that your clothes are soaking wet, really. But when you come inside, it's like, and I've told you before, I don't want to stop because I don't want to go wanna inside. Stop yeah. cause, you know, but you know, you need to cool yourself down, mm -hmm. but that's a miserable feeling that's to right. go from. Huh. It's terrible. It is terrible, terrible, but we're not complaining, <laughs> <laughs> are we? It's terrible. Um, what did you get to do last night that wasn't terrible? What did I get to do last night? Oh, gosh. Oh, we got to take a bath. Yeah, buddy. So the plumber got completely, well, not completely through. He finished this morning. If the Brooks mom's house, your mom is, is done. Her yes, house is plumbing completely is plumbed. Done. But the electricians haven't shown up because they got other stuff going on and, and it's my dad's business. So um and I called dad and told him that the that the uh the sheet rockers were through and they were starting to put the trim and stuff up. And um <clears throat> so the the plumber got through, he said, Look, I'm I'm pretty much done except the hot water heater's not hooked up. And I was like, I'm gonna hook this hot water heater up myself. Um my entire family is our electricians. Aunts, uncles, cousins. Oh, now. Granddaddy. I said we don't tell any stories. Brothers. Everybody is electrician but me. So, but that that being said, I've been around it my whole life. My dad's made me work at the business ever since I was able to. I remember being, you know, 13 years old and having to go get a worker's permit so I could work legally during the summer. I'll uh, tell y'all how, how much it rubbed <laughs> off. Yeah. When we built our house in Valley Grand, yeah. the old Cobb yeah. Hill, um, I installed some of the light fixtures. That's right. Because I had seen, I had been around it for so long, seeing them do it, that I felt comfortable enough to cut the power off to 
to hook up some of the lights and do it myself. So, so that's what you know. I was like, I'm just. I even told the plumber, I said, I'm going to hook the hot water heater up myself. It's just the it's the electric on demand hot water heater, and it has six wires basically that goes into it, and those wires each have a breaker on its own. And uh, so I was like, you know, this is it, really not that hard. Um, and I even watched it's Reem, made by Reem, and they had an instruction video on, on what to do. And I was like, this is easy. And probably within 20 minutes, it wasn't that long. I had it hooked up and going, and we have hot water. I was cleaning out a chicken coop, and I felt like I had just got my shovel and got in the coop. And you sent me a message and said, we have hot water have hot water and then then he came today the plumber came today and finished up everything so now we have your mom's bathroom kitchen and all's ready and the extra bathroom that we added in the garage that was for us being nasty and all that it's got a shower in there it's got a toilet in there and it's got a like a metal steel sink where that we can clean whatever we want clean there's real deep we can wash the dogs in there bathe the dogs in there it's ready to roll, too. I told Arlo, Gidget, and Dixie a few minutes ago that they better get ready because bath time is drawing near. <laughs> um, we have a place that's going to be perfect to take care of the, all them, you know, getting them bathed yes. and, and, and cleaned up and not have to be inside the house. So it's going to be perfect. It's plus, be perfect. plus we, we made sure we added a little handheld sprayer yes. so that we can get down in the shower and, and clean them off. We just need to get a shower curtain. We're yeah, gonna, we do need um, a shower curtain. Yeah, I hadn't thought of that. We need yeah. a shower curtain because we're not going to put doors on, on that. It's just out in the garage, and it's just for old nasty. And it was a spur. It was like a, wasn't in the plans. And I it, still don't want doors on it. It's not necessary. Yeah. Agree? I agree. I, yeah, it just <laughs> needs a shower curtain in there. Yeah, because so, it is a tiny bathroom. I need to take care of that because, I mean, like days like, to, I mean, I am nasty. Yeah. I'm nasty right now in case yeah. y'all can't see it. Been working on the pigeon coop. Yeah. And just need a shower, a hard water shower. Well, I, can I don't tell mean you, hard water. I mean pressure. It's some pressure. I was, I was talking to the plumber about it today and he was like, y'all did good. Well, the way y'all ran that pipe over here, he said, because you got plenty of pressure. Oh, I can't wait. I can't plenty of pressure. Wait. And you know what I noticed with the pecs that what? I was so happy about? Versus the PVC. What's that? Zero, zero glue smell. Really? Taste. You didn't, you, yeah. You could use the water instantly because there's no glue. Hmm. It's all pits. Well, in the past when we have had to make repairs on PVC pipe yeah. and cut a piece of pipe out and glue it and put it back together, you smell that glue for what seems like forever. Your ice will smell like it. you had to dump it out. Yeah. You can't drink the water because it tastes like it. But with that PEX, zero. I mean, it was instant. I mean, it was... Well, that's because it's all clamps, I guess. It's and all it's clamps. No, no hmm. glue whatsoever. The world is changing. Isn't it, though? I was, I was really impressed that that was, you know, we ain't had picks no. ever. No. <laughs> hey, but we do it's now. It's been around for a while. We do now. <laughs> and I'm going to tell y'all, those, those guys that are working on our house, boy, they are moving. Yeah, that's the guys that are the... I call them, they, they, they do everything. They're the sheet rockers. They're doing the trim. They're going to do our floors. And then, oh, speaking of floors, we got to talk about that. Yeah, but I got to tell you something first. Go ahead. <laughs> and they're going to paint for us. So they're working on our house, putting yes. the trim up. And I know how fast they work. So I'm thinking ahead, thinking I need to go ask them when they want me to have the primer. Yes. Well, this was Monday morning. As soon as they got here, I'm thinking I might not need the primer Tuesday or something. He looks at me and he said, uh, two or th two or three weeks. Yes. I, I said, okay, you can't paint. <laughs> and he said, yeah, I can paint. He said, it's going to be about two or three weeks. I got another job. Is that okay? And I said, yeah, I guess it'll have to be. <laughs> And I moped myself right out. Yes. And I thought to myself, oh, my gosh. All this time, we thought that they knew that we wanted them to paint as soon as we got the trim up. Mm -hmm. But they didn't know the time frame. And they already had something else scheduled. They did. And so I came back in the camper. And I thought. And I thought. And I thought. And I said, you know what? I'm going to go ask them if they know of anybody 
do they know since they're such good hard workers maybe they know of a painter. maybe they know of somebody because i already had my hopes up i was going to be moved in in june and this is july not really but um i'm ready to get in so i go back over there and i said do you know of any painters and he looked at me and he he could see the look in my face and he said i'll i'll try to find somebody for you yeah and i said okay thank you because i'm really ready to get out of the camper yeah and i walked off so i came back inside <laughs> And I started looking for painters. Yes. As I, I was, my bubble was just busted. That's you know, right. like you get something in your mind as to how things are going to happen. And when it doesn't necessarily go that way, you just get kind of disappointed. Mm -hmm. So that's where I was. I mean, I started having a headache because I was feeling stressed. Yes. I contacted a couple of painters. Of course, nobody can paint on the spur of the moment. That's just not how things work these days. Not at all. Which I knew that. Yeah. And I thought, to, I kept thinking in the back of my mind, if I hire somebody that I don't like know, and yeah. I, I, I don't have any referral, I don't have any reference as to what kind of work they do, I may end up being 2023 moving in versus 2022 because mm -hmm. it may make a big mess. So, um, I, 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 we went on to town, and I can't even remember. Oh, well, you had to get your well, driver's license renewed. I had to get my driver's license We were renewed. downtown, mm -hmm. and you asked them a question. You sent them a text and asked them a question. I sent him a text, and I oh, I asked him um, how much money were they going to need for. No, give me a price on what we're going to owe y'all for the trim work. Yeah, because we, we were thinking we'd go ahead and get get what we owed yeah. them total yes. that day. And right. that way, you know, they could go on and start their other job. Yep. And he said, don't worry about it. We'll get it when we finish painting, which yes. we'll go ahead and do now. Yeah, so he, so he is going to, they are going to paint, which is great <laughs> because I absolutely trust these guys. And that's They're the thing. so nice. I don't and have to worry about them. Do, we know, we know they do great work. They do great work. We don't have to babysit yes. them. You know? That's it, right. Bringing somebody else in, unless I could get a vouch from somebody mm -hmm. that they... It just kind of wasn't in our cars. That's right. That's right. So it all played out. But y'all, I'm going to tell you, I was pouty brook Yeah, because you thought it was going to be another... Because I kept thinking, I, I don't want to hire anybody else. I'm just going to wait the three weeks. So you didn't tell me anything. You just let me keep doing my searching? I'm just going to wait the three weeks. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I, I do not want anybody else. You know, it'd be like Brant saying, you know, I, I, I can't can't do the screen porch right now. It's going to be three weeks before I can get to it. You know, you may want to find somebody else. And I'd be like, I don't want to find nobody else. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, I, I kept thinking, what if something happened and we had to replace one of these guys that has been doing such a wonderful job? Oh, not yes. Not because of them, but. You know, what if a medical issue happened or you don't know, you no, don't know you what don't could know. happen. That's right. I just kept thinking how lucky we were to have the workers we had here. And yes. I didn't want to change. No, I didn't want to change either. And I did some, not little, want to change. some little birdie must have told him that because whatever he had in his cards, he rearranged. And I don't know what he did, <laughs> what he did. And they're so happy and jolly. Y'all, I'm just... telling you, they whistle all day long. <laughs> all day long. You're not whistling if you're sad. <laughs> uh, if you no, are not no. happy, you're not walking around whistling. Yeah, they, they, they're, and they're always smiling, always cutting up. It's and just, always speak to you and have such a positive attitude. So nice when he texts me. I just I just like them and I trust them. I really yeah. do. And, and, and a, another thing, talking about the trim work and stuff, a question that keeps popping up lot is is why are they putting the trim up wouldn't they paint before they put the trim up but they got to prime everything's got to be primed it's got to be primed and not yeah. only that it's got to be caulked and he wants caulked. the caulk yep. to be the color of the paint yeah it's got to be caulked so there's the doors are going up all the trims going up all the moldings going up because they spray they don't hand brush anything and they'll come in and they'll prime everything on one swoop they'll let the primer dry then they're going to come and they're going to tape off everything and they're going to come back and they're going to paint either the trim first or the, the walls first and then vice versa the other way. These are professionals. They're, 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 they're doing an excellent, excellent job. But that's why that they're not doing it separate is because uh, they got to prime. Everything's got to be primed. So I just keep prime telling myself, caulk. Time. You know, caulk. And they got to caulk. They gotta Caulking's going to be done. Yeah. And they're going to paint yeah. that caulk so yeah. it's the color of the wall that's or right. the ceiling or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it all, you know, it all 
looks professional yeah, because it, it is great. professional. That's right. That's um, right. Some people I saw asked, what color were we going to do the ceilings in the rest of the house? Just like the sheetrock ceilings, they're all going to be just ceiling white. Yeah, just ceiling white. So it's not going to be anything, anything, um, any different than your normal house in mm -hmm. the in the rest of the house. Just yeah. white ceilings. Just white ceilings. So to the floor. To the floor. So they're putting the trim up, and on the loft part where the floor is going to go. They got to put a piece of trim to cover that raw edge up. We didn't have any flooring. And so he asked me, he's like, what's your flooring going to be up there? What size? How far up do I need to go with this trim? And I was like, ooh, that's I a mean, good question. I mean, we've looked and we've yeah. been looking. That's right. You know, every time we go in a big box store, we take a gander and we know what we wanted, but we hadn't found it. Haven't found it yet. And I told him, I said, look, I will have you some floor by tomorrow. And I said, we're going to go look and get that done. We actually got it to him. I got it to him that day. That day. Yeah. Like a couple of hours after he asked for it, right. we had it. And maybe that's why they're so nice because we do what we say we're going <laughs> to do. do. What we say we're going to do. Yeah, maybe so. Well, so we hopped in the car, went straight to um, uh, Lowe's first, I think. Looked in there. Didn't really see anything we liked. Uh, we wanted something that looked old and rustic looking um and so we just didn't see it in there well you didn't know we, we saw we saw some things <clears throat> that that would have worked we would have been kosher with it yeah but i told jason i said come on let's go it would have taken a, it took us 30 minutes to drive a little bit further north yes and i said i just you know this is probably our forever house i just want to look one more place before we Make a final decision. We could always go back to that. That's right. That's right. We can always go back to it. And so we went to Floor and Decor, which is another big box store, but it's just strictly floor. And this place is huge. And when we told me, Carl, we we're going to make another stop. And she said, where? And we said, Floor and Decor. She said, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we went into there and it was just hundreds of floors to choose y'all let me tell you i can't even just it, it was like going into the library and trying to pick you know one book that you don't know what you're <laughs> after it was crazy <laughs> it was crazy and so we would find something we'll say okay we like this one <laughs> and then an hour later we'd find something well we like this one or we then 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 we'd find another one. We ended up finding like six that we liked, and then we had to narrow it down. You know what I thought was crazy was, is that when we first went in there, the place where we started was a, a style of flooring, and we liked one. And then you know six aisles later, we found another one we liked, and we're like, we're gonna go back through and make sure. And then that first one we looked at, I was like, I really don't like that one. Or it's got blue in it, or it looks pink, or something we didn't yeah, even see. It was kind of crazy. It was, it was, it was kind of crazy. So we did find the floor, which is a, it was a mixture between gray had brown in it. Uh, it is, um, it's the vinyl. What do you call it? Waterproof LVP. LVP. Yep. And uh, so had the cork backing on it. Said it was helps with sound. And so we found it and brought it back, and they were very happy we got it over there. Well, and let me tell you how happy they were. <clears throat> happy. They, we, it had to go upstairs, obviously. Yes. Y'all, they stopped what they were doing and helped us get it out and get it upstairs. 16 boxes. Oh, it was 17 boxes we had to get. 17, 17 boxes. boxes. And they, they, they took, what, how many? I don't know. Eight? At least. And I mean, then me we, and you took the rest of it, yeah. but. I mean, we were so just fortunate yeah. to have them. That's right. Stop what they were doing. That's gentlemen. Yeah, it was. That, that's just, that's how awesome they are. I mean, they weren't getting paid anything right. to stop or, I mean, there was just nothing. You didn't have to say anything. It was just, you come and you you help somebody. Yeah, they didn't even, yeah, they, they just stopped what they were doing, came and I started helping I never thought us. for a minute that they needed to help us. But right. Wow. I'm glad they did. Yeah. Um, That'd have been 17 trips up the stairs. Well, after I'd made about three, the boxes were not heavy, but they were awkward. <laughs> they were awkward. After I'd come up and down yeah. three times, I thought to myself, I said I was been feeling 100% for the past three days. Yeah. But I'm not sure if this is just me getting, you know, not so much exercise in or what. But the floor, 
is um like I said was gray, brown, has a little bit of white in it. Yeah. Different sizes. Perfect. Looks rustic. Looks like it's old. It really does. If we I posted a picture on Instagram and Facebook stories, looks really good. Which made me take think, and I thought you was gonna think I was crazy. I don't think you ought to tell this. I thought you think if, I was if crazy. If it's what I think it is. I think because it's upstairs in that loft and we're Y'all thinking are about gonna think he has lost <laughs> his marbles. <laughs> but but and so I, I told you, I want to put a TV up there, or one of our TV. We've got TV, so I'm going to put our TV up there and get us a little couch because me and Mary Carl, our thing, our daddy-daughter thing is, is me and her love to watch movies. I think she's going to be 30 years old <laughs> and still- sitting next to her 70-year-old daddy <laughs> watching TV. I hope so. I, I really do. I feel that way. We absolutely love it. We get popcorn. We make our own big old pop. Matter of fact, we got us, We well, we did. We had us a little, <laughs> like a movie theater popcorn maker. We got to yeah. get us another one. Yeah. And me and her, it was just, it was like, it's like movie night is what we have. And I disappear. You disappear because you're not a movie watcher. I can't like sit her. still yeah. that long. I'm ha- having a hard time sitting still right now. <laughs> <laughs> so that's our thing. So I'm thinking, I want this place to be kind of like a, a movie theater type atmosphere. And I want it to blend in. I don't, I don't want it to, you know, you're looking downstairs. Of course, I know we're leaving our ceilings black. You're going to see all that. But I'm thinking about painting the walls in there because it's a small area. It's not big. Y'all ready for this? I'm thinking about painting the walls black and it being like a movie theater, you know, atmosphere. And <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. And I told you, and I thought you was going to think I was crazy, but you really didn't. No. And the reason I didn't is because I had been looking from downstairs to upstairs. And I know that our whole concept was to make the ceiling disappear. Yeah. Well, if we paint our walls a shade of white upstairs, upstairs, it's going to be like, what is that up there? Yeah. You know, it's going to draw your attention to it. And that's, that's not our purpose no that's not our point. And, and i may change my mind before we do it but that's what i'm thinking is painting it black like i said it's just a small room uh and just kind of be a little bit private and kind of remind you of a movie theater it's not gonna be like it, you know we don't have a lot of company i've said that before right. it's just us 99 percent of the time but if company did come that's not a place where we would gather right. so it's our place it's our like private loft right and i think that we'll put a lot of cog hill memorabilia up there yeah i think so too um not to say we won't we may bring y'all along with podcasts up there but regardless we will have a backdrop right you know it'll be i just i just think it just needs to be what we want right not that the rest of the house is not what we want but I think if that's what you want, then that's what you do. I think I, I'm really leaning towards it. I think that's going to look pretty cool. It's not like yeah. they're going to be metal and you can't replace it. Yeah. And if it's we don't paint. like it, we can, we can just paint it back over. I can paint. That's right. I can just paint. Just like a haircut. Like I always tell that's you, right. call, if you want to cut your hair a certain way, cut it. I, it's going to grow I back. I quit worrying <laughs> about stuff like that. Things that can be changed. Yeah. Do what you, you know. It can be take changed. That, take that chance. That's right. You've only lived one time, as far as we're aware of. Right. And I just, I see no point. Yeah. We may roll the dice and paint it up, paint it black up there. I think it'll be cool. I think so. I think it'll be really cool. I just, um, you know, I think, I think we'll try it out. See if it works. If it doesn't, we'll make a change. And have our own little, even though we don't have like a big movie theater screen, we just got a regular TV in there and probably get a couch. It'll still feel like our own little private movie theater. That's right. That's right. We could get us some little speakers to put in there or, or a sound. We do have a sound bar, don't we, from our yeah, old Yeah, that's right. So, I forgot yeah. about that. Yeah. We would have some speakers from the old. That's right. So, who knows? Who um, knows? But I the just, floor will match perfectly with the, if well, we do do that. We did. Yeah. We picked out the floor with the intentions of making it go with either. Right. So, that way, it's not like, you know, if we were to paint the walls black, the floor will work. If we were to paint the the walls white, yes. they will go with That's it. right. So, Either way, I think the it's floor's going to be That's there. Right. The floor is <laughs> going to be there. We may change. <laughs> That's right. We're not going to change the floor for That's sure. Right. We're not. <laughs> We're not. We hope that it lasts their duration of the house. Yeah, I agree. It should because that new floor is supposed to be. Well, it's like um, 
I saw a chart where it was like rated pet friendly and waterproof and, mm -hmm. and it was almost like 10 out of 10 on everything. Okay, so, good. um, and it good. wasn't a real expensive, you know, floor. We were, yeah. we were trying to remain budget friendly. That's so, right. um, while we had a price in mind, we still wanted to get what we wanted. That's right. Cause I didn't want to say the, the biggest mistake we made with, with our first build. Yes. Was going in saying, we're going to do this budget friendly and not to say we we should have done it differently but we wish we could have done it differently i think though on our first house is that we try to be too budget friendly i think you're right and we kind of cut i want to say we cut corners in like building no we didn't we cut just, any corners we just building. did stuff that we that we ended up going back and replacing yeah, and it was kind of yeah. ended up being a waste. It did. Because, like, okay, we put a, a vinyl floor in our upstairs. Yep. Well, that was fine and dandy. It served its purpose, but we soon realized that it was pretty loud clanking yeah. at the bottom. That's right. Of the, and because that was a living area upstairs yeah, yeah. there. It was a bedroom. That's up right. There. And we replaced it with carpet pretty quick. Pretty quick. And then we, we bought... I think when we built our first house, it was right when they first came out with that laminated flooring. Uh -huh. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And so it was very, very inexpensive and it was looked like supposed to look like wood or whatever. And we wanted heart pine. Remember that's what we wanted. Yeah. We wanted heart pine floors and everybody, here's the, here's the thing. This is like us talking about the black walls, everybody, all the floor people, Everybody's like, you don't want heart pine because it's soft wood and it's going to wear and show scratches. And we're like, well, that's what we like. We like that's it to look like. old and we worn. Like the... But we ended up taking everybody's advice and didn't do the heart pine floors and then came back and replaced our vinyl, not vinyl, but laminate floor with heart pine floors. That's right. So, I mean, yeah, it's, um, yeah, get, kind of live and learn, I, I guess. I kind of feel <laughs> like, you know, we spent the same amount of money just I'm sure. at two different times. Yeah. You know, yeah. it was kind of like it wasn't budget friendly initially, but we ended up spending more because yeah, we true. redid it. Mm -hmm. And we did all of this ourselves. And right. we didn't have, you know, <laughs> that was our hobby. Yeah. Kind of like redoing our our house. Yeah, it was. We, we, we got where we like to do a lot of that kind of stuff. And, because we did a lot of it on our very first house when we got married. Um, but now we don't have time to do that kind don't of stuff. Don't have time. <laughs> don't and have I, time. You know what? I really don't enjoy it like I used to. Well. I like, I like, you know, I found other passions like gardening and farming and farm animals and playing with Nugget and Moody and Peaches and. Well, we have a child. Chickens and. And we have a child. That's right. So, I mean, that that DIY stuff that we used to love to do. We don't do it quite as much as we used to. Well, I hope we're done DIY and except for building fences and, you know, farm stuff. Right. Which I'm all for. I have these past few days since I've been feeling back to, I would say I'm feeling back to a hundred percent. I have been dreaming of things that I want to have done on the farm. And what would have what have you come up with? Well, um, the the green, I don't know what you call it, silky coop, I guess. Uh -huh. The middle one. Uh huh. I want to put some posts and build a little lean to area. Okay. Because the chickens like to run up under the bus. Yeah. You know, to to seek shelter from the sun right. and such as that. Right. And so I'm thinking that we'll build a little area that you know, just a little, just a little off the top. Got gotcha. you. Um. Open, open sides mm -hmm. so they can get up under it and shield themselves from the sun. Um, I'm thinking about getting about 25 chickens. This is the thing you told me today. <laughs> I think was, I have lost my marbles. Which was, you know, yeah, I guess it, it, this kind of threw me off because I was not expecting you to say this. But you was like, I think I want to get 25 chickens. <laughs> That are just strictly laying chickens. And because this was our original plan when we built the bus, the, the bus coop anyways. Right. Was to, to, to move that bus around in our big pasture area. And because we got 20 acres of pastures and, you know, move it around and have us a chicken tractor, chicken mobiles, what we were calling it. 
and that would be our laying chickens. But here's the thing is all those chickens moved with us from the other farm. They all have names. They're all strictly pets. They're all our pets. And they're not great. I mean, they're layer, they're laying chickens. They lay but, eggs and we appreciate that. Yes. But, but they're not strictly there for, they're there for our joy. Yes. And I would hate to see me hook that bus that chicken tractor right. up to my tractor, haul it out onto the 20 acres and something get every single one of them. Well, not only that, it's just the fact that those chickens are pretty old. We don't have any really young chickens except the ones that just hatched well, recently. <laughs> well, my <laughs> so point would be to pull them out into some the old pasture ladies out there. to take them away from what they have always done. Right. And ever since we've moved here, they free ranged in that fenced in area. They see no threat. Yeah. I mean, they 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 seek shelter when right, they hear right, a hawk right. or whatever. But they know that they know where everything is. I just, I mean, I know an old dog can learn new tricks, but I don't feel like these are the ones to do it with. Just they're 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 not. They're they're what probably the youngest one's probably three years old. Yeah, they're old ladies, and they. They're not going to be, you know, pasture egg laying chickens. You know no, what I mean? No, I feel like they need to be that way from yeah. the get go in order to. Uh, they would be in the blazing sun, not that they couldn't get in the shelter, you know, get up under it and seek shade. Right. But I just don't feel like that's what they are accustomed to. Yeah. Yeah. We would need some laying chickens. Um, need something that's kind of built for that. Versus, right. 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 I mean, we've got uh, a Brahma named Lydia, and y'all no lie, that chicken weighs 10 pounds. There's no way that she could be out there. <laughs> well, that'd be the other She'd thing. She'd be looking at me like, you think <laughs> well, she, well, I'm fixing to sit out here <laughs> in this <laughs> hot air just to lay you some eggs? Well, not only that, would you, would you, who would you, who would make it? <laughs> and who wouldn't? Who would stay over in that area, and then who would move out into the, to the pasture? I don't know. I just, we, but you're right. And we may not get 25. We may yeah. get we may get 15. 25. You're um, <laughs> you stuck on 25. Uh, well, I feel like some of them aren't going to make it from the get-go. Well, that's true. That's true. Um, so I, I think that the green coop is plenty big enough for the amount of chickens that we have to sleep in there. Yeah, you're so that's right. That's all they do. Yeah, that's all they, they do. They don't eat in, in that coop. Yeah. They don't, you know, drink in that coop. That's right. All they do is sleep in it. That's right. So I can teach them that they have a new coop. It's right next door. And yeah, that, that won't be, and it's got an automatic door that works on it. It's got an automatic yep. door. Well, we will have to put an automatic door in the Eggmobile. Yes, and we got one. Oh, we do. Yep. I know exactly where it is. I'm thinking about cutting it out tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> um, but get them started going in the green in the green coop and build the little porch over it. Yes. Because they won't have their area to hide up under the bus anymore. That's right. So the porch area will be their new. And, and we could temporarily. I got some. I bought those shade sails. No. You don't want to do that. Okay. We're permanently doing permanently. it. We're not going back and doing it. <laughs> but I was thinking about getting 25. Mm. And, and I said Rhode Island Reds just because they're good egg layers. Hardy. Um, hardy. You know, they're going to just about make it through anything. Rain, sleet, snow, hail, you know, yeah. winter, summer. If I get asked, and we do get asked, <laughs> what I'm, I'm new. I want to start owning chickens. I want some egg layers. Uh, what do you suggest? Right off the bat, first chicken is Rhode Island Red. They are so hardy. They got a. They're very docile. They got a great temperament. Uh, they lay a lot of eggs, and they just stay healthy. And they're so easy. That's a great beginner chicken. Is a Rhode Island Red. So tell me, Carl. I'm thinking about getting my chicken wagon going. And moving it around in the pasture. And this can be like my project. And mm -hmm. I'll take care of them. And I'll do everything that has to do with it. And I'm going to do 25 Rhode Island Reds. Uh-uh. Nope. Mama, you don't need 25 Rhode Island Reds. You're going to need probably about 15 Easter Eggers. She said Easter Eggers. Five cr French Copper Morons. Mm -hmm. And then, like, um, I don't know what else she said. Five something else. Um, wh What were they? Um, The ones that we had. Pendencinka, uh -huh. Pendenscada, pin whatever she's they're called. She's thinking of egg colors. That's what she's thinking. She's thinking I'm not of doing this colors. to make money off eggs because if anybody knows anything about selling eggs, you ain't going to make, money, make off money off selling eggs. I'm looking at it 
from something that I would enjoy doing. Right. Um, may even give eggs away. Who knows? Right. But it would just be a project. It would be. And, and from the get-go, when we built that bus, that was our plan to start with, was to make that an egg mobile and move our egg mobile around and and have pasture raised free range chicken eggs and that's that's that was our plan and then of course things happened and we went from having six months to to move out and get everything over here to six weeks to move out and get everything over here so a lot of our plans got pushed to the wayside and and then the more i think about it the more i don't want to move our i mean i know all those chickens names I don't want anything to happen to them. Not that I want anything to happen to any animal. Right. But I would feel totally responsible for taking them from where I feel like they're safe to somewhere that I'm not so sure about. Well, plus two, they're not, they're not pasture. They're not, raised. they're not chicken, meant to egg laying chickens. They're just a hodgepodge of chickens. We've gotten over the years that are, that are long in the tooth. That's right. Along in the beak. Yeah. <laughs> and and another thing is, is as I go in my new house yeah. and I sit and I look out the front two doors, the first thing that I see when I look out those doors is that high rolling bus. Yep. With the big wheels. Yep. <laughs> and see, we could have cut the wheels off of it. We could have. That's what they we did with the other two. But we it's, the it's an eyesore sitting there. Yeah. So what's the point? Right. What's the point of having it sitting there if it's on wheels? And we left the wheels on it just for that fact. Just for that yep. purpose. Yep. If this doesn't work out, we may cut the wheels off of it and put it on the ground, but I know somebody's going to fill it for little pigeons. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I really like the idea of the Rhode Island Reds. Um, it's not going to happen next week. No. Um, it's too hot right now. I've for already chicks, decided yeah. that I'll brood them in the garage. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Versus the barn, because right. you all know my slithery friends tend to hang out down there at that barn. Not to say they won't hang out at the garage, but... They're not going to hang out at the garage. There's a lot less chance yes. that, that my chicken, my chicks, my biddies mm -hmm. are going to get got by Anaconda if they're in the garage than in the barn. Yeah. Right? Right. So, I'm going to brood them in the barn, and then when they get to be juveniles, where they're too big to fit in my brooder, I'm going to move them into the bus and shut them up. For probably about until they get big enough to, to oh, go out and roam around. I got you. As juveniles, yeah. when they're not big and too big to be in the brooder, but not big enough to be outside, they can live in there. That's right. They'll know where they're supposed to come back to every That's night, right. and they're going to learn that at an early age. Yep. I got it all figured out. And we got the Premier One fencing. We've already got the Premier One fencing. Got We've all, already got, got, a, got an electric solar door. charger. Got a oh, solar charger and the door. Got an electric door. We got everything to do it with. We've like, got like a said, water that was our plan already. To start with. Yeah. You know, it's got the hose that we used to use for the rollers. Right. Um, like I said, I'm not in it. I'm not in it to to think I'm going to make money. I just think it would be a good thing to do. Yeah. It it would it be. And be people fun. will enjoy watching it. I think. I think so too. Because y'all, you know, y'all all like to watch us gather eggs. Well, we don't get many eggs. Yeah, we're not getting many eggs right now. It's just this it would not be very enjoyable to right. go in and say, "Oh, got two eggs today." <laughs> And a turkey bit me because she sits in a box all the time and doesn't sit on eggs. She just sits oh in the box. Oh my and gracious! Bites mm. me. I got sores all over me from that crazy turkey. That's your turkey. I don't. She doesn't have a name. <laughs> I don't even know what her name is. I don't know what her name is either. It's not Ruby or Rhonda. It's a. It's a. It's, it's a, a brown, brown turkey. And I don't even where know did, where she where came did even from. Come? That's what I'm fixing to ask you. Where did it even come from? I know. Where? It was a juvenile when we moved here. Oh, So okay. it was so little that we we just hadn't... It's probably been in that nesting box since we moved here because... <laughs> it ain't been in, I've seen it outside a good bit. <laughs> Every time I go to gather eggs, she yeah. attacks me. But I just didn't know who in the world it was. Well, she's a big girl, but she loves to loves she's the broody. nesting box. She's broody. She's broody, but turkeys she are laid out for the Thomas, season. She don't love Thomas, though. She don't love Thomas. Ruby and Rhonda do that. Ruby and Rhonda love Thomas. Shall they follow Thomas around? Like it is you just it is bless the hearts. They are just like a kid in a candy store when they see Thomas. And, and they Thomas just, is all oh, just my puffed goodness, up. man, you are so beautiful. And he just showing out all day long. <laughs> man. It's and it's a, not even laying season. No, it's over. 
it's over. And that's why that's what I want to tell that turkey is do you know that you ain't gonna lay another egg this year? <laughs> you know what she's doing? What she's trying to wait on a chicken to lay eggs and so she can sit egg. on it. But she never has a chicken egg under her. Because the chickens would probably say, I'm not laying you, you girl. That's what they're saying. I don't want nothing to do with you. Oh my goodness. All mm. right, let's take some questions. We'll what take do you some think? questions. Let's take some questions real quick here. And y'all don't get mad at us if we don't see your question. Yeah, because this, I don't know how many. We were, it, we're it goes streaming so fast. Well, we're streaming on Facebook and we're streaming on both of our YouTube channels, on our regular channel and our podcast channel. So there's a lot of people on. So we just try to do our best that we can wait, here. Wait, wait <laughs> you got to cut your volume down. I do, and I had it off. Got to cut your volume down. What about your pond? Well, I'm going to tell y'all something. Stay tuned for tomorrow's video because the whole thing's about the pond. <laughs> yes. So that will be all the questions will be answered in tomorrow's video that I got to finish editing when I get through with the podcast. Jason, when are yes. we moving in? I think it's going to be late September. Oh, my gracious. Early October. Are you nuts? That's when I think we're going to move in. Yeah, we are moving in in August. <laughs> okay. We'll see who's right. We'll see who's right. The white dog is Foxy, and Foxy is here. Yes. Foxy stays under cars, under houses, under campers, under anything well, she can find because it's hot. Well, plus two, she is a Great Pyrenees. Well, Great Pyrenees mix, and they're kind of nocturnal. They they sleep a lot during the day. Of course, she's sleeping under under something in the shade, and then they stay up all night guarding the farm. So that's why you don't see her, her that much. You really don't see her that much even in the winter time. You didn't really see you no know, bear. You even hardly ever saw a bear at all. That's right, bear. I mean, and plus that you know it's hot outside. When it when the weather cools off, yeah. you're gonna start seeing yeah. a little bit more of every dog here because they don't want to be out in this. Mm-hmm. It won't be on this heat. Hey, Miss Sue Slaughter. Miss Sue Slaughter. Yep. Um. Are we the concrete floor? And we're not painting our concrete floor. We're just going to put a clear over it. So the downstairs will be a concrete floor, and and the upstairs will be the floor we just bought. And so that's what we're doing. We're not staining or anything. We're just going to leave it natural looking concrete, which we really like. Um. I see a lot of comments from time to time about. Um, Houston at Daniel Arms, mm -hmm. um, Arms Family Homestead, mm -hmm. lost a pea chick. Mm -hmm. Can y'all give him a pea chick? Or Lester needs a female turkey. They're a long ways away from us. We're though. in Alabama. Mm -hmm. They're in Oklahoma and Texas. And at least a 10 to 12 hour drive. And then plus flying them this time of the year is just not, they, they wouldn't make yeah, it. it. The heat's so just too much. Yeah, yeah. So while we love our friends and mm -hmm. we would love to support them it's just not possible it'd be it'd be yeah it'd be kind of be kind of tough to get them there kind of tough to get I them don't there know why i keep doing this be kind of tough to get them there i can't what kind wait. of rooster is corny corny is a cream leg bar is what he is and they lay a uh the females lay a, a blue egg it's pretty so I was thinking today, since me Carl thinks I need some color in my eggs, why don't I just put Corny and, oh, what's his wife's name? Corny's wife? Yes. Uh, I've been calling her Pearl. No, I don't know where she has a name. So I always call her Pearl. Corny and his wife, I could put them together mm -hmm. and hatch eggs, but you know what? You're going to get 50% roosters. I'm going to get 50% mm -hmm. roosters, yep. and I... I want this to be a strictly hen egg yes. laying mobile. I don't want a chance of any fertile that's eggs. Right. Some people, when they get an egg and they see a little blood spot in it, they think that's nasty or whatever. So not that I think it's nasty, but mm -hmm. I don't want a fertilized egg in my, my, right. in my egg mobile. That's right. Let's see here. They're going pretty quick. I'm trying to see what i got here um the the ship lap in our master bedroom mm -hmm. somebody wanted to know if we were going to paint it mm -hmm. and that headboard wall we have we think we have decided that we are going to paint it the color of the doors we think we think we think we may keep it natural though it looks really looks good i it don't does. know yet. we don't know 
We don't know yet. But we think we may paint it cheating heart. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to let Peaches go in the garage like at the old place. Um, I don't... I don't know yet. I don't know how... I mean, how we don't object gonna, to you know, her going object. in the yeah. garage, don't but I don't know that she would want to. We'll just have to wait and see. We have to wait and see. Um, Did we warn the pine guy about the snake? Pine guy's long gone. He's gone. He long gone. Yep. Greg's on to bigger and better things. He will be back, though. He will be back, but he's not here working anymore. Or yep. you, you will see it in the video tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk. I talk about Greg in the video. That's right. Dixie and Gidget. Will I please feature them in a video? We will. Yes. But guess what? We're gonna do it when we get in the house. Yeah, it's just kind of hard right now because they're in the camper for the most part because it's so hot. And, and our camper is so tight, so tight that we can't even hardly move around. <laughs> I mean, like we have to move a laundry basket yeah. to sit down and eat dinner. It's crazy. And then put the laundry basket back where mm -hmm. we eat dinner. I mean, it's just crazy. Yeah, but we will start featuring the dogs more. Especially once we get moved in, I for told sure. Dixie Absolutely. and Gidget and Arlo that they better be ready for some stardom time. Yes. Because it's coming. Oh, yeah, it is coming. I said, y'all going to have this awesome dog groom. Mm -hmm. And we fix the show, y'all. Yep. Going in and out with your pretty selves. Uh, how many Ozilla babies are left? Uh, four. The little white one, it is, it, it came up missing. Yeah, we don't know yeah, what happened. What happened to it? I looked all over the property. Um, probably says she frequents. I never saw it. Yep. And Mary Carl told us as soon as she saw the white chick versus yeah. the other ones yep. that if something happened, it would be to the white one. That's right. There was no way that we could catch Ozella and her babies to put them in an enclosure and her be happy. Well, we didn't really have any closure to put her well, in either, but that, still, yeah. We, she would, she didn't want to do that. It just her out so bad, yep. But that was the chance we knew. I mean, we we, we knew that was going to happen. We were quite happy and shocked because even at Little Cog, um, our original farm, when she hatched out, only one made it. Only one made yeah. it. Only one that's made it. Little Lou, that's Little Lowe or Miss yeah, Lewis. That's right. That's Miss Lewis. How much sweet tea do you... I don't drink any sweet tea. How much sweet tea do we drink? I drink only water. Um, I don't... I probably drink... I probably just drink a cup at, at supper. Uh, a solo cup? Yeah. Whatever size that is. You yeah. know, just a red solo cup. But during the day, I drink water. Yeah, drink yeah. water. And, and, and so it's not like that's our nourishment throughout the day. We mm -hmm. drink water. Did something happen to Arlo? Nope. Oh, Arlo's still here. And um, it was perfectly fine. What did I tell and, him uh, he looked like? He said he looked like a stuffy. A stuffy. We were <laughs> headed out the camper to come and do the <laughs> podcast. And I looked at Arlo mm. and I said, baby, you are so cute. Mm -hmm. You look just like, just a, stuffy. like a stuffy. <laughs> and I have never said stuffy in my life. But that's short for stuffed animal. It's short for stuffed animal. What is a musky dine? A musky dine is a native grape to our area. We can't grow... Your typical grapes, um, gosh, is there, I thought there's a term for them grapes, but anyways, your typical grapes like Concord grapes, those grapes don't like our heat and humidity, but musky dine, which is a native grape of ours, actually does like our heat and humidity. Um, also known as a scopanon, uh, it's just the color variation is different, but they're basically, according to... Uh, Jason that pedal from the past and his dad who's a who was a horticulture professor at Auburn they're all musky dines uh, somebody asked I'm, I'm gonna forget if uh -huh. I don't keep it up here how much room do you need to raise peacocks y'all it's not necessarily that you need the room as much I mean you do need, need room, the room yeah but if you have a garden yeah or you have anywhere that they can get into the road or anything like that it's gonna happen yeah i don't yeah that's kind of hard to say it, um i don't i don't know how to answer that one i don't either because yeah. i mean we have scott ozella and miss lewis in that fenced in area well but they it, don't stay in there it never yeah. ozella of course with of course, her ozella babies yeah. is out all the right. time scott this morning was standing beside the camper because yeah. I heard him <laughs> pee hewing yeah. right outside my window. So Ooh. I don't care where you have them. Right. I don't like ours to be locked up all the time. That's why we let them out. Mm -hmm. But um, if and they're loose, 
they're gonna roam. And a peacock can jump six foot without even flying. Just jump straight up in the air six foot without even flying. So, uh, a friend of ours that we got our initial pe peacocks from had railroad tracks across the street from her, mm -hmm. and her property was probably set back from the road about as far as ours is. Yeah, it was. And then the railroad tracks were about where the road is. And I know y'all don't know how far that is, but still, it's not like it's. It's a good way. You can't throw a rock. It's a long ways away. And she had a lot of peacocks. It to to the point where it wiped her flock out get run over by a train they must be it must be something that they're attracted to because she had guineas do the same thing yeah they, so there's i don't know if there's a noise or something it's just kind of strange i have a friend of mine that um is an engineer and he asked me one time did julie mm -hmm. lose a peacock yesterday and i said i don't know i'll ask her and so i did and she said she did and he literally saw feathers flying yep from the from the engine of the train it's crazy they, they have crazy. to have some kind of desire to want to be near that sound. Yeah, it, is, it must be something. I don't know if it's, I don't know, it's just weird. Very, 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 very weird. I don't know what this was, but some somebody said something about not canning, but making jelly. Mm -hmm. um, I hate canning. Yeah, you, you don't like canning. Um, I know some people thoroughly enjoy canning. And uh, I, may, we, now, I, I do like making jellies and jams. I do enjoy that. But as for canning, canning, I really, we just don't enjoy it. No, we like sticking it in that freeze dryer. The freeze dryer is made nice. Made the harvest right. Yes. And you can, you know, add water to it and reconstitute it back to its natural state. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yep. But I, I think it's the thing that I have to stand still and stir. And Well, that's the jellies and jams. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It just... Just, just something that we don't enjoy. But again, I know a lot of people love canning and enjoy it so much. And I'm glad you do because I love to consume them. Yeah, I know it. <laughs> <laughs> you want to take one more? Uh, you pick it. When you pick it, let's see here. You pick it, and then you know what's going to happen. What's that? Then I pick one. <laughs> That's the way it always goes, doesn't it? Let's see here. Now they. Yeah, they're coming in, they're coming in, they're coming in. It hasn't rained yet, you know it? It hasn't rained. It's, that, it's the way it goes. It has not rained at all. You know, I was, um, I was in, I guess in the chicken pen the other day, mm -hmm. in the chicken area, and I caught a glimpse of something. And guess what it was? What was it? Nugget was chasing a butterfly. Oh, my gracious. I got so tickled because I thought to myself, if the viewers could see Nugget mm -hmm, chasing mm -hmm. this, he's, he's like, I don't know if he's terrified of them or if he wants them out of his place. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Somebody asked, have we had our honey yet? And I'm glad you asked that question. That was a good one. It was. Because perfect timing because we have not had our honey yet, but... I talked to the lady that that does our honey at Hidden Valley Farms, and she told me that we're fixing to harvest honey here on the farm like this coming week. So stay tuned for that because we will be tasting our honey. And y'all, they have been covered. I mean, they have covered our flower farm over there. I mean, all over those flowers, which I know there's there's eight hives over there. So I know that's not where they're getting all their um, their pollen and pollen and nectar from, but I'm just excited about the honey here. She said that they're just, she's got to do it pretty quick because she's completely out of room. So we will be trying our honey in the next week Oh, you week mean or the so. hives are completely out yes. of room to, to, yep. to store anything. Yep. She said that, so she's fixing to harvest it. So stay tuned for that because I plan on doing a whole video about that if I can. I might have to pick me up a bee suit though. Didn't she say she had an extra one? I, she, I know she said she was going to pick me up one because um, she was real close to um, Foxhound Bee Company. So I just may let her do that. You see one? Um. Uh, do the... Do the farm pets know their name? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, 
Absolutely. I can say Mildred and I can be at the house and she turns and moves. Um, all the goats know their names. Moody absolutely knows his name. Nugget absolutely knows his name. Um, that's, that's Peaches knows her name. Uh, I don't think the chickens do. I don't think they do. I don't do think either. chickens do. I don't think Thomas does. I think, and it Scott. may be the way we say Scott, because I'm always excited when I see Scott. And so I say, Scott, and he looks, and it may be just the way I say it, but. I feel like Scott does know his name. At least to me, he knows his name. Somebody just said that Scott knows his name, so they've seen it. Yeah, they've I think seen he knows it, yeah. his name, too. But I just don't know about the chickens. I don't think the chickens do. Penny did. Penny did. Because Penny was by herself a lot, though, because she lived in Mary Carl's room. Um, but I don't think the rest of them do. I don't think so, either. And uh, I don't think it's a lack of us saying their name. I think it's just that they're not focused in on us talking. They're not. They're not. But it's funny. I can say Moody can be across the pasture, and I can say Moo Man or Moody, and he immediately looks up and looks at me if he's eating. It is hilarious. Somebody and said, Nugget did, too. did we get our hair cut? Yeah, girl. <laughs> we did. All we of get, us. We got our hair cut. <laughs> we get the family discount. <laughs> we roll up into the the haircut in place. And now I'm, I'm going to take, take my mama next week because she hasn't been since yeah, we moved. That's here. right. She's been going back to her old hairdresser and we might as well take all four of us in. That's right. She's you really going to think I'm crazy when I <laughs> send, all her, four of us send her a text and say, family of three plus one, please. Four, all four of us. They may have to get a bigger bench. Can you taste again, Brooke? I can taste. Mary, Mary Carl, Carl can't. can't. Mary Carl still can't smell her taste. She still can't smell her yep. taste, but I yep. can all right. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this live stream and this podcast, and we will catch you on the next one. It look, it's looking like Thursdays really are fitting into Tuesday our schedule. Was our last week, though. No, it's Thursday. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Thursdays are working kind of well with everything. Are so kind of working well? So we're going to kind of keep on trying to do it every okay. Thursday. Okay. And I'm thinking about when we get the house built. Yes. Having like... um coffee talk tuesday or something and have another one in the morning that'd be nice before we get started yeah and talk about what we plan to do that week we could do that Not, you know yeah. I mean, we don't plan out our videos mm -hmm. but we could plan what we want to have done that week sounds like a plan to me y'all tell us what you think <laughs> y'all be good